How many of you at this table think that you're racist? How many of you at this table, you nice white people, would actually happily trade places with a black person in this society? A white woman chooses to host at her home for a group of seven friends. The price of the two-hour dinner, $5,000. My only reaction so far is, how in the hell can I get in on this scam? You're going to love this. There is nothing more dangerous in our society right now than white suburban women with some extra money lying around and a whole lot of white guilt. Ever since uh, Ibram X. Candy and uh, Ms. D'Angelo started writing books and going on the speaking trail and MSNBC cable news appearances, Ever since then, white suburban women have been falling over themselves to try to figure out how to purge themselves from their white privilege. And it reached the point now where they spend a ton of money on very fancy dinner parties just so they can be berated and insulted by black dinner guests. White women are socialized to be nice. And part of that niceness means you don't come to a beautifully prepared dinner table and then leave because something upsets you. So we know they'll stay. So that's why we use the dinner. How many of you at this table think that you're racist? Welcome to Race to Dinner. How many of you at this table, you nice white people, would actually happily trade places with a black person in this society? Disclaimer, the following contains blunt and honest conversations about racism. We have the hostess prepare a crying room, so when your white lady feelings get hurt, you can go in the room and have at it. Disclaimer, no white women were harmed in the making of this report. In 30 seconds, we establish, you know, that you all are racist and that you know the hierarchy. Uh, black at the bottom, white at the top, and the rest of us somewhere in between. The goal is to have radically honest conversations. You know, I'm old enough to have demonstrated and marched in the 60s, okay? And what I know is as a society, we don't have honest conversations about race. During Cyber Rao's unsuccessful run for Congress in 2018, she found her schedule overflowing with coffee dates and campaign events. At every event, like line of white ladies wrapped around the, the door waiting to talk to me, to tell me, not me, not all white women. My platform was anti-racism. Not me, you've got me wrong. Denver native Regina Jackson worked on Cyrus' campaign and thought to consolidate these one-on-one -on -one anti-racism discussions into a dinner. So we did it. We just did one of these dinners and it was full of white women in the Broadway musical. You know, crying, arms folded, eyes rolled, pacing around the dinner table. And uh, we posted about it on Facebook and it went viral. I should have educated them. The dinners, which continue to grow in popularity, have taken place from Denver to Chicago to Toronto. A white woman chooses to host at her home for a group of seven friends. The price of the two-hour dinner, $5,000. You know... I... My only reaction so far is, how in the hell can I get in on this scam? Do you pay 5000 bucks? you invite six of your friends over, and I get to call you names all through the table. And, and we have a crying room set up because I get to call you so many names that you're going to end up being moved to tears. Let's freaking go. Why? I, I could do that. I'd do it for half that. I'd do it for $2,500. All you liberal suburban white women invite six of your friends over. You supply the food. I'll supply the tears. I got plenty to say to y'all. Plenty. Oh, how racist you are? That's just scratching the surface. This is actually kind of brilliant if you think about it. I'm not, I was going to be outraged over this, but I'm not. These, these people are brilliant. They're absolutely fantastic. I'm jealous, is what I am. I'm also a little outraged, but, but not at the people who host the dinners. Hold on. $5,000. You know why? People are worked up about this because white people think that them doing this work is charity and we should be paying them. So even a penny would be too much. Thank you. Race to Dinner's message can now be consumed you. through a New York Times bestseller and a documentary. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Want me to sign your book? All geared for white women who acknowledge their unchecked biases and are looking to purge the Karen inside of them. That's great. I'd like to purge some Karens as well. Uh, here's the thing. This is this is this is my suggestion to all of the white women who are involved in this and volunteer for this and spend their money on this so that they can feel good about their racism, I guess, at the end of the day. Uh, you know what? I don't think white suburban wealthy women who are racist should be allowed to vote. Now, of course, I don't think we should have a law that says that, although I would entertain it depending on the language of the statute. But I will say this. If you women truly feel that guilty, if you recognize how racist you are and how you are just drowning in white privilege, 
and that and that you would never trade places with another black person, as you said earlier at the table, and that you acknowledge that your actions, your inactions, your opinions, your wealth, your free mobility, your spending power, that you have contributed to the debilitating systemic racism in our society. Let me tell you something. After you host your dinner and you fork over your five grand, the next thing, in fact, the only thing that you should do to right these historic wrongs and to, and to in some way reduce the impact of your hateful racism in our society, what you white women need to do, you white suburban wealthy women need to do, you need to not vote this fall. This November, you need to stay home because you staying home will actually elevate the vote of your black counterparts. Especially if you're single, by the way. If you are a single, white, suburban woman, don't vote. It's racist if you vote. In fact, if you vote, you are you are silencing and disenfranchising a black person's vote. Because who knows, you might vote in a different way. You probably will because you're racist. So stay home and do not vote. That's the only thing you can do to actually right your past wrongs and the wrongs of your mother, your grandmother, and your great-grandmother. Just do it. Just do it. Just don't vote. Stay. I, I don't want anyone involved in this project to vote. And I think that'll really make an impact. Meanwhile, we got a congresswoman who has a really creative new idea for reparations because, by the way, you are racist, and so you should pay reparations. Uh, but you're going to love this. It's actually a great idea. Just this past week, I saw, I don't remember which celebrity, but it was actually a celebrity. And I was like, I don't know that that's not necessarily a bad idea. But I'd have to think through it a lot. One of the things that they propose is Black folk not have to pay taxes for a certain amount of time because then, again, that puts money back in your pocket. But at the same time, it may not be as objectionable to some people about actually giving out dollars. But obviously, then you start dealing with the different tax brackets and things like that. And that's one of the reasons that, you know, we argue the reparations make sense because so many black folk, not only do you owe for the labor that was stolen and killed and all the other things, right? But the fact is, like, we end up being so far behind, right? And so it's like, how do you bring for people gap. exactly and so it's like if you if you do the no tax thing for people that are already say struggling and aren't really paying taxes in the first place it doesn't really exactly they may, they may want those those checks like they got Ex 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 exactly <laughs> jamie crockett congresswoman jamie crockett that's the idea instead of just handing out money for reparations, let's just suspend taxes and black people don't need to pay any taxes, okay? How's that for a plan? I mean, it's the least that you can do. Although it took the reporter there who's kind of giggling at the end, uh, it took her to sort of realize the fallacy in the whole plan because if black people are due reparations because of slavery 150 years ago, and reparations need to be paid because they still are faced with systemic problems to advance and get ahead in our society. And the only way to right that wrong is to give them reparations so they can be lifted out of poverty. If that's the case, well, then right now we actually do have a, a bottom limit on an annual salary as to what you would have to pay taxes on. And if you are below the poverty line and literally living in poverty, not only do you not pay taxes, but you actually get a tax credit right now. It's called the earned income tax credit that you have to pay. I believe that's what it's called, right? The EIT, isn't that what it's called? So if you make a salary below a certain amount, not only do you not pay taxes, but you actually get a tax benefit through your taxes, extra money, free money that you get. In fact, the only people who are actually paying taxes in our society that would benefit from a tax credit under the guise of reparations are people who are making over, what is it now, median 70000 a year for a household or more. And of course, 90% of the, 1% of the population pays for 
uh, like a giant percentage, like 80% of the actual revenue in this country. So I, I guess the point is the only black people who will benefit from this tax credit are the wealthy ones and upper middle class black people who I'm told don't exist because of slavery, because <laughs> that's the whole reason we need the reparations. I don't think Congresswoman Crockett thought this through. After all, she did get the idea from a celebrity. But when it comes to race baiting and reverse racism and pointing your anger at white people because of bad things going on in the black community, nothing's better than this Memphis city councilwoman who, when complaining about crime in her district, perpetrated by young African Americans against other African Americans, where the victims are black and the criminals are black, she has discovered who's to blame, the white man. You know, I hear all the time, I'm a native Memphian and, 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 and we, you know, well, act like it. Let's work together and act like it. Our children, it's our children that look like me that are being killed daily. The four-year-old just got killed. I mean, we can go on and 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 on. But state legislators hate us here in Memphis, Tennessee, and they hate black folks in Memphis, Tennessee. And that's just point blank because it's us that's killing one another. But when we talk about and we want to compare ourselves to other cities, but other cities ain't dealing with the prejudiced white boys that's on the hill, that's making these laws and legislation, that's making sure that Memphis, Tennessee does not progress and that we do not change our habits and the forms and the way that we're doing things. Other cities ain't dealing with what we're dealing with. We're dealing with people on the hill that make state legislation laws that know that we have a problem. And then we get here in the city and then we beat each other up because we want a quick fix to something we can't fix because they are trumping everything that we're trying to do here. And so and then you get beat up, everybody get beat up, all these hard questions comes and all these forensic. What we should be doing is marching down there on that hill and making them understand this is not working here in Memphis for us because every, every TV, every channel I look to, they look like me. And we're getting numb and ain't nobody marching, ain't nobody protesting, ain't nobody saying anything. But sitting here, meeting after meeting, blaming someone, and it's on the hill where they hate us at, where they don't like us because this is a predominantly black city run by a predominantly almost black council. Everything you look at is black, 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 black. I love I love the one white dude sitting next to her, not even paying attention and eating something. through. Why are they all wearing masks, by the way? the hell is going on here that's yolanda cooper sutton memphis city councilwoman blaming all of the black on black crime in memphis on i believe she said can i yeah i'm gonna quote her the white boys on the hill the white boys up there in the state legislature who hate all of the black people and she just said you know i look on television i see all the victims and i see the criminals and they all look like me she says pointing to her black skin they all look like me and uh, if I were that white dude sitting next to in case I just didn't want to bother with it and just, you know, can we move on with the meeting, please? Because I don't want to get my hands dirty with this kind of topic. But if I actually cared about the truth, if I actually cared about healing this nation, if I actually cared about advancing the interests of all people in the city of Memphis with this race baiting bigot sitting next to me, I would actually say, I have a question for Yolanda, for Yolanda Cooper Sutton. You just said that it's the white people's fault for the crime in your neighborhood. It's the white people's fault that black people are mugging, raping, and murdering and assaulting other black people in our city. Can I ask you something? You said that they all look like you. Do you mug, rape, assault, and murder people? Do you? Have you? Do you plan to? Can you envision yourself doing that? I would think the answer is no, Yolanda, right? You're not going to do anything like that, would you? You wouldn't mug anybody. You wouldn't assault anybody. You wouldn't rape. You wouldn't murder, would you? Right? You wouldn't, would you? No, you wouldn't. Good. Oh, thank goodness. I figured that was the case. So let me just ask you a question. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? After all, you're black. And it's the racist white boys, as you called them, that are creating 
a situation and passing legislation because they hate you to create the environment where young black men in Memphis with no control over themselves just find themselves murdering and assaulting and mugging and raping. And of course, it's not their fault. You won't blame them. You're blaming the, how would you call it? White boys on the hill. Well, what makes you so special? How are you immune from all their racism? Why aren't you out there murdering people, Yolanda? Why wouldn't you do that? And until Yolanda can answer that question, then she really needs to rethink her position on how it's white men and their racism that has caused all of the violence in Memphis right now, perpetrated by predominantly black people against other black people. Because if it's true that it's just racism and the murderers and rapists and muggers in Memphis can't control themselves and they have no actual responsibility for their behavior, because what are you going to do? It's racist white boys who are making us do it. Well, then I don't see why she shouldn't be considered a suspected rapist because she's just this a hair trigger away from doing the exact same thing, right? Because that's how we're supposed to judge each other. That's how we're supposed to prejudge each other based on the color of their skin, right? That's what you're teaching us, Yolanda. Or is there something else at play here? Maybe there's some, maybe that thing that's keeping you from being a murderer, maybe that thing is missing over there with these people and it has absolutely literally nothing to do with state law. Maybe. Could be wrong. You know what? Let's host a dinner party with seven white women and that'll make you feel better because you can tell them how racist they are and how they're responsible for the crime and it'll certainly make them feel better. But one thing we can all agree on, no one at that dinner party should be able to vote this November.